Okay, I'm going to test the Mallard EL84 taken from the uh, Watkins Clubman single EL84 Class A output on this Mark III AVO valve tester. Here's the uh, little um, Mallard EL84 just there. And uh, this is how you do it. Um, I've, I know this um, AVO Mark III is dead accurate. So the voltage is set close. We check the heater. Uh, is no problem. Heater hasn't got a nice short. Then you can test leakages on this dial here. Uh, between the various um, plates inside should be very high mega ohms, which is the left hand side of the meter. So cathode, grid, screen, anode, all um, no shorts. Then you turn this control here to check uh, the heater when it's hot it's heating heating up the heater now you can see uh, the red glow inside and then while that is heating up a little bit I mean power valves take a little longer to stabilize than uh, than preamp valves but you should move through these tests quite quickly really uh, don't want to spend ages testing the valve uh, so we can check the insulations while it's hot. Turn this valve, this control down here. And there's no leakage, and then there's a special um, position here, cathode to heater insulation. Uh, very good, tiny, tiny movement. Then I've set the controls as per the book. Um, a 7.3 volts grid, negative grid and 11.3 milliamps per volt on there so I can test it now see how many milliamps we get so I'll turn it on and um, not great you can see it's down to uh, below 30 milliamps it should be 48 which means I, I know this um, meter works for the new valve is a new valve that is uh, a good quality one will give you 48 milliamps at the right setting so this valve is basically um, worn out but I expect the um, gain is still okay uh, I'll just show you how to test that we reduce the meter to zero increase meter sensitivity so we get it right down to zero with these controls here uh, and you turn it to, to test and it's not that good. We turn this control here and you can actually get the actual milliamps per volt. Uh, we're using the inner scale. It's about six. So the valve's not... it is... It, it drift slightly as it warms up. So set you set it to the position there just in the middle of the green. And um, and then you read off the milliamps per volt on the scale here. It's set to the inner, uh, the inner scale, so it's about six milliamps per volt. And it should be um, eleven. So the valve's worn out. It's it still work, but it, it, it's lost all its sensitivity. That means you're going to have to drive it much, much harder. It probably won't fail. I mean, it, it's just won't be really, really touch sensitive on the guitar, etc. So uh, we turn the meter back and set these controls back to zero. It's current's gone up a little bit, just over 32 milliamps now. It's way off the 48. So we turn the test off. Um, no insulation breakdown inside. We can rotate these controls here. So there's no short circuits at all. So uh, we turn that off and we can turn this one off down here and the valve will cool down. So um, unfortunately that old Mallard valve is um, got to be replaced which I'll have to put another good valve into the amp. And then I'm going to continue, I'll test the other valves in there. You've got the rectified valve and the little ECC83. I'll do that in a minute and show you how. Okay, I'm testing the little valve rectifier, the EZ80 from the uh, Watkins Clubman uh, old uh, valve amp. Uh, the EZ80, uh, this little mullard one, 
uh, is um, the lowest. Uh, my lad? Is the lowest current uh, of valves, but as there's only um, of rectifier valves, but as there's only one EL84 one in class A in the uh, little clubman, it easily provides enough current. It's rated up to 90 milliamps, which is more than enough. Now on the um, Avo Mark III, it's pretty straightforward valve to test. Uh, in the data book for the EZ80, which is just down here, uh, the settings for the con uh, little roller controls on the top, 6 volts uh, on the heater, and you set it to 30 milliamps, that is the actual um, load that you put on the valve, so it's 30 milliamps, and you test each of the, it's a double rectifier, so each of the um, uh, diode rectifier sections inside uh, at 30 milliamps. The uh, Ava Mark III can uh, test that um, other currents on this dial here, but we set it at 30 milliamps. You can actually put a 60 milliamp load, 120 or even a 180 milliamp load for bigger valves. Uh, you can put more load on if you want, but actually um, by setting it exactly as they say, then the meter will show if it's good or bad by being in the green section. So we set the uh, we've set the dials, uh, we've set the um, voltage on the heater. Uh, we're going to set it to number D1 first, which is just the um, one side of the rectifier. And uh, with the other controls, it's just a quick one on the on the rectifier valve. You just check the uh, heater is actually working, which uh, will be right hand deflection. It is. Then you check um, no short circuit, which is fully left for maximum mega ohms. Nothing short in there. And uh, then you ch turn this knob here to start heating the um, the indirectly heated. Uh, um, the cathode and then um, this should show no short circuit which is not actually maximum on the mega ohm scale uh, the little valves heating up at the moment then you check for the insulation while it's hot which you turn this here and it should be a very small movement on the dial which is um, way of, this goes this is 25 mega ohms here so it's way, way above that. And um, the valve's got a little red glow inside, just about to see it. And uh, then we can test the current. So set it to 30 milliamps. Uh, this here, green is good. So we test, turn this knob to, down here to test. And it's way up to the top of the scale for green. So it's um, easily uh, good enough the emission on that one so and we turn the dial down here to the other um, it's a dual rectifier so the other position and uh, scales jumped a little bit even more uh, turn it back again as I said you can put extra load on this you could put a 60 milliamp load here which I just turned to 60 milliamps and it's still showing good but that isn't actually the reading in the book that you test with so it can even provide 60 milliamps in fact it's a 90 milliamp valve so we'll just turn that back and you turn the test back off and always check for the insulation well, while it's been running sometimes some valves as they get hot the insulation starts going, going and this scale here will start going to the right and if it does then it's not good so I just turn this back and turn it off. So it goes up to the right, which is nominal, and down here I'll turn it off. So now it just cooled down, we can take it out. So and put it back in the um, amp. So that that valve's um, fine. Okay, testing the preamp valve, the Mallard ECC83, which uh, was taken from the uh, Watkins Clubman. It's the only preamp valve in there. 
uh, must be original and uh, testing it on the AVO Mark III. Now uh, the valve uh, fits in there but we have to set up all the controls so on the AVO. So looking at the book down here we've got the um, ECC83, you've got the settings for the rollers on top which give all the connections to the valve, 6 volt heater, uh, set the negative grid volts to minus 2.0 which will then set the current when you test it, 250 volt anode, uh, should give 1.2 milliamps, that is um, really the acceptable figure uh, with these valves often um, with these little preamps they're not spot on but they're close so and um, 1.6 milliamps per volt which would be the gain and uh, you do want a reasonable gain on these valves so going back to the tester I've set the um, this is the negative grid volts here and it's set to uh, minus 2 which is pretty near the low end of the scale I mean this thing can go up to uh, over 80 volts negative for testing some of the big power valves. Uh, 250 volts on the anode, uh, 6 volts on the heater, or 6.3 it says. Um, and here is your uh, milliamps per volt, we'll be testing in a minute. It's set to about 1.6, it's on the um, outer, outer setting. Again very near, very low down on the uh, actual on the range on the pot. Um, now the meter deflection we'll be using uh, quite a sensitive meter but it's always best to start off with the meter set to um, minimum sensitivity so you don't damage it if there's anything wrong with the valve and uh, this control here we'll be testing the two parts two parts of the um, two triodes so you test one and then test the other so the meter is um, set, uh, this is the voltage, uh, mains voltage settings and make sure it's um, dead accurate on all volts. It should be in that little black section there which is close enough. So to test the valve, a little mullard in there, you can see a little mullard logo on it. So here we go, We um, first of all you test, the very first thing you do is test that the heater is working so you turn it to this position and that's a short circuit, means the heater is actually connected. And then you can test also any internal leaks, so you don't want to test the valve, it's got something wrong with it. So you can test uh, shorts. And now this scale to the left is maximum mega, and so no short at all. So it's moved to the left, and that's where you want it. Test cathode, grid, screen, two anodes, no problem. You leave it on the heater position then you turn this control here to start heating it as you turn it you not often get a flash from the valve yeah there you go not a problem some valves flash some don't doesn't harm them it's just just the way it is not, nothing to worry about let it heat up preamps don't take very long to heat up and stabilize power amps take longer maybe a minute or whatever but um, don't want to be hanging around too long when you're testing valves uh, the faults normally show up pretty quickly. So the next test is you test to check for the any um, leakage between the cathode and the heater, which on a preamp valve you wouldn't want because it just create a lot of noise. Uh, turn that minuscule deflection on the meter here, which is normal, but uh, this goes up to 25 mega ohms and then even higher, which is uh, means it's uh, absolutely fine. Now when you uh, when we turn to test we're going to measure the milliamps it's giving at the negative 2 volts so I'm turning it to test now and uh, I've got to increase the sensitivity of the meter with this control 25 milliamps 10 milliamps and it's just about on the 10 milliamp scale showing about 2.5 milliamps I'll try the 2.5 milliamp scale yeah it's just showing about 2.5 milliamps which is um, much more than they, they said 1.2 but um, I find these valves normally give higher readings uh, it, they're very sensitive on the setting of the negative grid 
even a small deflection here just makes the needle swing around. Uh, just minute movements on this part here. I think this part needs possibly needs cleaning, but as you can see, just tapping it and just making it move. So I'll I'll leave it just there. It, oh, it's just as you can see, it's about minus two where they said it should be. Um, that's anode number one. Test anode two. Again, almost the same, slight variations, always a minuscule variation on good valves, on triodes. Now, um, to test the milliamps per volt, you have to set this meter to zero just by rotating this control here. Bring it down, bring the meter down to zero. About there. Then you turn this to the test and you adjust this um, milliamps per volt to get, give you one the point or the line in the middle of good there and the outer scale it says it's two and a half milliamps per volt so that's excellent they they said the uh, minimum for the valve would be 1.6 I believe ECC 83 and um, so it's got really good gain uh, turn it to uh, back to this position turn it to anode 2 uh, it's on zero. Excellent test again. Minuscule less gain on anode two, but it's about two point four. So again, the valve is excellent. Uh, turn turn the scale back. Return it to ten. Turn these back to zero. And uh, as you can see, the it's reading about two point eight milliamps on a two. Almost the same on A1, so um, this valve would be perfect in use in the circuit. Um, take it off of test here. On power valves, sometimes you get uh, after it's been on a little while, you get a little bit of leakage. But on on uh, these trials, that hardly ever happens. If there was any leakage at all, you get rid of it because any leakage means noise, and you wouldn't want any noise on a preamp. Check, turn this back off and um, turn this uh, turn this one back off and um, we can use that valve it's really really good so that's how you test the ECC 83